Okay, fantastic. Well, welcome everybody to our June 24, 2010 Forex training. It is a special presentation between FXStreet.com and FXDD.com, so very glad that you could join us here for today. Our disclaimer is that we do not give buy, sell, or hold recommendations, and that trading is risky. You want to make sure you trade only with risk capital and money that will not affect your lifestyle. Now, our special training today, and I've actually got a little mistake here, it should actually be part four, is anticipating the forex trends part four using Fibonacci retracement. And your presenter today is Greg Michalowski. He's our FXDD vice president. He's also the chief currency and trading analyst at our company. And many of you know him from his speaking engagements worldwide. He is a great person to learn from. Uh, myself, I'm Sean Powell, one of FXDD's national trainers. I'll sort of be helping along in the commentary and answering your questions while Greg is speaking. Then we'll also put questions to Greg in the Q&A session. So if you do have a question, definitely type it in the uh, control panel there. So we've got a couple contests going on at FXDD right now. The big one is our Formula One contest where you can win two passes to one of the next upcoming races. And this also includes $5,000 for travel and accommodations. There are also a number of cash prizes and Red Bull merchandise that you can win. You can get all the details at fxdd.com on that. Now, today is a special day, or this weekend is going to be a special weekend because the race is taking part in Valencia, Spain. That's the next stop on the Formula One circuit. And our Red Bull team car will be running there. Both of our cars will be running, and so we wish them the best of luck in Valencia, Spain this weekend. So now a little bit of housekeeping. The training is going to be on Forex market analysis and trading strategies. Greg is going to show you how to find opportunities for yourself. So definitely participate. Make it great. And you can learn more about Greg at the FX Street blog. And his uh, link there is fxtrader-link. So without further ado, Greg, I'm going to pass you the mic. Thank, thank you all. Um, let me, um, all right. Uh, once again, thank you all for uh, coming in uh, here today uh, to the webinar. And uh, as, a, as a review, the what I've been doing over the last uh, four sessions is education as far as uh, trying to catch on, catch trends and, and stay on trends. And the game plan that we developed uh, over these last four sessions, and they are available for rebroadcast, by the way, uh, on the FX Street site, um, is to trade the trends and keep fear to a minimum. Uh, as everyone knows that trading trends is your friend and keeping fear. Fear is uh, what I consider your worst enemy. So if one's your friend, the other one's your enemy, uh, that, uh, that's the uh, balance that you have to have uh, in your trading is uh, you have to be uh, looking for uh, your friend and you have to be avoiding uh, that uh, fear or that enemy. Uh, and that's what our game plan is uh, for trading uh, and how I tr uh, look at the market. And in order to catch a trend, and this is part review, uh, but uh, I'm assuming that there are some new people here in the room, so I'll go through it quickly. But in order to catch a trend, it is important to anticipate a trend. Uh, if you can anticipate something, you're much more suited to um, uh, stay on the trend. Uh, and that's the um, other thing about um, trend trading is that if you anticipate a trend, you want to stay. It allows you to be, you have your mind geared toward staying on that trend. It also allows you to keep your fear to a minimum, and that, that of course is part of our game plan. So the question is, how do you how do you do this? How do you anticipate a trend and stay on the trend and keep your fear uh, to a minimum? And we went through steps uh, in prior uh, sessions where uh, the first uh, step is to search for non-trending markets because if you have a non-trending market, what do we know? We we know that non-trending markets uh, generally transition into trending markets. The market is either trending or it's non-trending. If it's non-trending, um, it'll eventually transition to trending. You just have to be prepared for it, anticipate. And if you anticipate the trend, then you're ready to go. You're, you're able to trade that trend and stay on that trend. Uh, the second uh, step is to use technical tools that are geared uh, for our game plan of trading trends and keeping fear uh, to a minimum. So obviously, if we want to trade trends, uh, we want to we want to have tools in our traders uh, toolbox that are going to define trends and non-trends because a, a tool can also, um, if you use a tool that is going to define a non-trend, what, what do you do? Anticipate a trend. So uh, we want to stay on the trends and we want to define non-trends. So, so our tools should do that. Our tools should also define risk. If we can define risk, then we know um, um, our stop as, as well. And uh, knowing risk um, allows you to control your fear. If you know, if you know and accept your risk, then your fear gets diffused. It gets spread out. And, uh, if you have your fear diffused and spread out, um, then, uh, you're going to trade much more 
logically. You're going to be in rhythm. You're going to understand um, the, uh, the the possibility for uh, losses, but you're going to be able to accept them, and you're not going to be doing um, stupid trading and make stupid trading decisions. And you're also more able to uh, stay on the trend if you know your risk, if you define your risk at the beginning, and now you can follow the trend if it, if it indeed starts to trend. The other thing uh, that you want to use as far as your tool is what I call unambiguous trading tools. And uh, what an unambiguous trading tool is one that either gives you a bullish, um, that is a buy, or a bearish, that is a sell uh, bias. Uh, it's black or white. It's red or green. It's yes or no. It's not gray, yellow, or maybe. It's bullish or bearish. Bullish or bearish. And uh, uh, this is an example of a uh, what I call an uh, uh, ambiguous uh, trading tool, and that is one one uh, the RSI. Uh, the RSI at this point right here was showing that it was an oversold situation in the euro when the euro was at 131.37. Uh, the market had uh, the RSI had moved below 30, but as you can see, the market continued to trend, 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 and the RSI got weaker and weaker and weaker. So RSI is not one of those unambiguous trading tools that I I uh, use. Uh, it is what I consider an ambiguous trading tool uh, in that it just tells you that the market is oversold. It doesn't give you, it doesn't define risk. It doesn't say when do you get out of this trade. It just says the market is oversold and it stays oversold all through this period here. Even on the correction here when the market uh, got back, up, uh, the RSI got back above the 30 level, uh, where does the market, it's well below the um, uh, the point where the market was first oversold. So for for me, at least something like the RSI is not a tool that I will use in my tool, uh, trader's toolbox. It is what I call an, an ambiguous trading tool, uh, and we'll go through uh, what I consider unambiguous trading tools uh, when we go get uh, uh, move a little forward here in our lesson here today. Uh, the step three in in, a, in how you can anticipate trends, stay on trends, keep uh, fear to a minimum is what I term trading near the borderline. And here I have the New York New Jersey borderline. In between, um, uh, this is in the uh, Lincoln Tunnel, actually, uh, and uh, this is my visual, uh, the way I look at the market. Uh, there are also lots of border lines, and border lines are those areas on charts where on one side it's bullish, on the other side it's bearish. And so the tools that we use um, are going to help define our border line situations, our border line points where we're going to... Uh, be doing or concentrating on our trades at those borderline situations. And by doing that, we're able to define our risk because if you, if on one side it's bullish and the other side it's bearish, uh, we know that if the market breaks through on the bearish side, the market should continue in the direction of that move. If the market moves back above the borderline, that is, turns more to the bullish side, uh, then, you're, then you know your risk, you get out of that trade uh, because the market is not doing what it should do. And we'll go through examples as the, as the day goes on, especially as it relates uh, to things like the Fibonacci retracement levels. And the fourth step is to stay on the trend. If you anticipate a trend and get on the trend, then stay on the trend. That is so very, so, so important. Uh, but uh, once again, if you anticipate a trend, you're more suited in your mind to be able to think about staying on this trend. And so it's so important to try to anticipate a trend, but then Make sure that you stay on. Don't get out too soon. Make the uh, let the trend uh, tell you uh, when to get out, and that is step five. That is exit gracefully. If you have a good reason to get in a trend trade, have a good reason to, to get out of a trend trend trade. And we use the same tools uh, in order to determine uh, when to get in and when to get out. And Fibonacci Fibonacci retracement levels uh, are an important tool uh, that allow you to uh, stay on a trend. Uh, to, li to, li to live through uh, corrective moves, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, they are an important tool in my uh, trader's toolbox. Uh, in our past uh, sessions our, uh, that we've had here, uh, we've talked about simple moving averages. We've talked about trend lines. I heard uh, Ed talk about trend lines in, this, in the prior session. And for those people uh, who are listening to him, I, I tend to like trend lines. Uh, uh, they, they give you an unambiguous trading decision if the, if the market price is above a trend line, it's bullish, if it's below it, it's bearish. And, and uh, I try also to just uh, figure out uh, 
uh, the one that the market that that makes most sense as far as a trend line. But uh, we're not uh, necessarily talking about trend lines today. I just wanted to comment in regard to that. It is one of my traders' toolboxes. But the third one is uh, Fibonacci retracements, and that's the focus of uh, today's uh, lesson here today. Uh, Fibonacci uh, retracement levels are used. Uh, I use them at least to target levels down the road ahead. To target levels down the road ahead. So I, I like to think of trading a trend as like driving on a highway. If you're on a bearish highway, like the euro has been on of late, uh, you want to uh, see the market move to target levels. Uh, you want to see it get to um, uh, what I call exits along that highway. And once it gets to the exit on the highway, uh, it, it moves to the next exit. And as long as the market stays on that highway uh, and moves from exit to exit, uh, and that may be breaking through a moving average, going through a trend line, going through an old low, um, uh, levels like that, um, as long as the market continues on that highway, uh, then the trend continues. It makes sense. And think of it that way, and you're going to be, you're going to have a nice visual in your mind of what you're trying to do. Now, if, if the next target, um, is not reached, uh, then the market, uh, uh, reaches, uh, it's like getting, not being able to get to the next exit, turning the car around and going back the other way, uh, on the highway. Now, Fibonacci retracements can be used as target levels down the road. For instance, if the market was trending to the upside, uh, just visualize this in your mind and we'll get to the pictures in a little bit. But if the market was trending to the upside and starts to come down, um, you could draw Fibonacci from the low to the high, and the 38.2% retracement becomes a target down that road. So that's that's an example of of uh, of, of the market um, of, of using Fibonacci as a target. Um, and uh, and and there there are many ways to use the Fibonacci as targets. We'll go through those examples. Uh, the, the Fibonacci also give can give clues re regarding continuations of trends. Uh, if the market is trending in one direction and it breaks, uh, you know, above and it starts to move back to the upside uh, and it breaks above a 38.2% retracement, the, the chances are what the, what another target might be would be the 50% uh, retracement level. So the, the main trend may be, uh, may be over for the time period we're in a corrective phase. Uh, and uh, it's okay to trade those corrective uh, phases as long as you use the proper tools that are going to tell you that, okay, um, the bias is bullish now, uh, but then if it doesn't get to that next exit on that bullish highway, uh, then the bias now reverses and goes negative. And again, it's easier said, uh, or it's, it's much easier to see it. Uh, so we'll go through examples in regard to uh, that idea. Uh, it gives traders confidence to trade the counter corrective trends. Like I said, it's okay to trade corrective, uh, corrective uh, trends. Uh, for those people who are uh, trading the euro and listening to all the commentaries on how the euro was going to 115, uh, you know, that purchase, par uh, purchase uh, power parity level that Ed was talking about in the prior session, or to parity, um, or to that uh, parity level uh, that you're uh, hearing on CNBC. Those people who sold the euro at 118 or 119 figure, uh, handles um, and had the market move back higher, uh, you got hurt on those corrective uh, trends. And uh, some of the tools that we use in our analysis, uh, including Fibonacci retracement levels, uh, would have uh, prevented that from happening. Um, and uh, perhaps you could have traded the counter trend. And Fibonacci retracements also help define risk. They help define your risk, and we'll go through that in a little bit. Now, there are key Fibonacci retracement levels that I do use. Uh, there are others that are out there, um, uh, but I tend to use three. And the three Fibonacci retracement uh, I'll get to that uh, counter-corrective uh, move in a little bit. But the key Fibonacci retracement levels uh, that I use are 38.2, uh, 50%, and 61.8%. My theory, uh, you know, there's a 23-point-something uh, Fibonacci level. Uh, and uh, my feeling that is that if the market uh, corrects short of 38.2% uh, of a, uh, let's say, a trend move to the downside, uh, then it's... It, it, uh, in, other, in other words, maybe does 23% or something like that, or doesn't get to the 38.2% retracement level. That's a weak correction. And uh, so um, 
I would be looking uh, for the market to continue or to reassert the trend uh, in the direction that it was moving. Uh, the 50% is really not a Fibonacci level, uh, but it is a level that the market watches. Watches. Um, it is, uh, uh, and it and it makes sense. And um, you know, I'm fully supportive of 50% uh, 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 retracement level. 61.8. If the market goes over 61.8. Uh, I'm really concerned. Uh, I'm thinking that the trend in that direction is more established and that the market is going to uh, continue in the direction that it, it is moving uh, um, in, uh, when it breaks through a 61.8% retracement. Fibonacci's are off of high and low ranges or low to high ranges. I like uh, most software's uh, applications calculate the Fibonacci levels uh, automatically. Uh, and uh, I'll show that um, in, in the examples that we uh, go through in just a moment. Um, and uh, uh, I also like to use the most uh, recent. You, know, you can put Fibonacci levels on a lot of different um, areas. Well, the thing that I want to um, stress to people in regard to how to set the Fibonacci levels is just think in terms of look at a chart and find the most logical highs and lows uh, on that chart, uh, people get too caught up in, okay, where should I put my Fibonacci level? Um, why should, you know, uh, it be, try to keep it simple, uh, folks. Um, the market is very simple in the foreign exchange market. There are tens of thousands, thousands of traders or hundreds of thousands of traders, uh, um, out there. If not a mil, million, I don't know. I don't know how many traders there are trading the euro at any one time, but, uh, the fact is that that is an advantage to you to have so many traders out there. And what you have to do as a foreign exchange trader, and I've said this in the other lessons, um, is to try to think like the masses. Try to see the most obvious uh, uh, levels out there. Try to put yourself in, in everyone else's shoes. Don't just think about yourself or uh, think about what is most obvious out there. And that's why um, I, use, uh, tr I like to use trend lines, and the trend lines that I use are just the most obvious trend lines. Uh, the ones that make sense. And, and so I think that, that those levels, and I've seen it time and time again, those levels prove to be a good borderline levels. Uh, Fibonacci's off of a, uh, you know, most recent high or even a day's low to day's high range if you have a, a good range in a trade, uh, uh, currency pair, for instance. If the euro, you know, you come in the morning in the New York session, the euro's already moved 130 basis points or 140 uh, or basis points of pips. Uh, you know, put a Fibonacci on it uh, just for today's trading range um, and uh, see where the 38.2% retracement uh, level comes in. Uh, be prepared for it. And if you're prepared for it by using these tools, using things like uh, Fibonacci retracement levels, you're going to do uh, much better uh, in your trading. Uh, so um, now um, I'm going to um, actually get into uh, some of our uh, charts here. So I'm going to see if I can figure this out. I'm going to take the camera off. I'm going to put up uh, my charts and I'm going to put the camera back on. Do you see the Euro uh, chart? Yes. And by the way, if there's any questions, uh, be free, feel free to uh, stop me. Uh, I know I've been more uh, the chatter right now, but uh, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Everyone sees it. Um, I get the idea. All right. So this is the Euro uh, versus the U.S. dollar. And this is an hourly uh, chart. And, uh, this, um, I'm going, going back in, back in time. Uh, obviously here's uh, where the market currently is. Uh, but I want to, uh, you know, just go through, uh, some of the things that we probably talked about already, uh, and, um, uh, also include, uh, things like the Fibonacci retracement stuff. So, but I'm, I'm scrolling back in time and going all the way back to December. Sorry, another one of those, uh, coughs to December of, uh, 2009. This is when the euro started to really, uh, trend to the downside. And, uh, uh, before I get into the Fibonacci's, you know, I want to talk a little bit about our moving averages and why we think, uh, or, or how I would look at this, uh, market because they all interact. I use the moving averages. I use trend lines. I use Fibonacci retracements and all of them are kind of like, those are my three tools that I use. That's it. I don't want to cloud my mind with any more things like, uh, like I, like I mentioned, RSIs, which are ambiguous. I just want to keep things as simple as possible. And these three tools are, are just enough and not too much to allow you to help to trade the trends and, and anticipate, uh, trends and, uh, stay on trends. 
and uh, so they, they all work really well together. And in this case, what we saw here was the 100 bar moving average and the 200 bar moving average were starting to converge. In our last show, I think we talked about talked about threes a crowd where the two moving averages start to converge. You start to get narrow trading ranges here, and the market starts its uh, move to the downside. So in this trend to the downside, there's not a lot of retracements here. This is just a plain old uh, old fashioned move to the downside, trend type move to the downside with one. Uh, one move above the 100 bar moving average. You can see how the market just stayed uh, below this whole moving average all the way to the downside. If I were to put a Fibonacci on this thing, on this uh, uh, on this move, and and say you know uh, played um, uh, what if uh, you know at this point the market comes down to this level right here, and I'm going to put the Fibonacci from the uh, the most recent high. Let me zoom in here a little. Most recent high uh, to the low. Hold on a second. The high to this uh, low right here. If I can get it. There we go. Um, you can see here that the 38.2% retracement on this corrective move to the upside after this sharp move to the downside, yeah, it's 200 and 100 simple moving average. Uh, that's what they use. Uh, it doesn't approach that 38.2% retracement. So the trend continues to the downside. If I were to continue this, um, and the market continues on its way to the next low here. Um, I can see here again uh, that uh, in this case, the Fibonacci, once the market bottoms here and starts to non-trend right here, the market does not approach the 38.2% retracement level uh, right here. And so as a result, um, when the market moves above the 100 bar moving average here and fails right here, this gives you another clue that the market is going to continue to the downtrend. In other words, this corrective period here is really a sideways period. Markets trend, they non-trend, or they correct. In this case, it trends, it non-trends. It doesn't get anywhere near that 38.2% retracement line, and the market continues its trend to the downside. But what I want to point out in this uh, initial move here is that when we finally do get a correction uh, that is significant, and it's it's significant in that uh, we get above the 100 bar moving average here. We go to the 200 bar moving average. That's the green line in this chart. And the market starts its sideways pattern here. Uh, and and uh, this is very similar to what we saw uh, right here, except it's more extended. Uh, and then the market starts a corrective move to the upside. But note where the market stops. It stops at the 38.2% retracement level. And that's a clue for you as a trader. That's a level that that's a borderline level, folks, that you can sell against. You can sell the market against this 38.2% retracement level uh, and in, in anticipation that the trend is going to continue. Another alternative as a trader is you don't necessarily sell here, uh, but you would look to sell when the market moves back below the 100 bar moving average and confirms the move through the 200 bar moving average. Why? Because the 38.2% retracement worked, and we're in this trend-type market. Trend, non-trend, and by the way, this this goes for, you know, this is like a month's time here, folks, where the market non-trends for a month, corrects 38.2, and then starts to move back down the 100 and 200 bar moving average. So you can, can you see how this, how the Fibonacci levels allow you to anticipate the potential for another trend type move if it held the 38.2 continued its move to the below the 100 which is a a, a, a bearish a signal uh, it's a borderline level right there and then move to the 200 and then the trend continues to the downside in this case we have a very similar pattern as the previous example where the market continues uh, its move to the downside now now let's uh, just put a, a Fibonacci play play what up here and put a Fibonacci from this move to the to to the uh, downside there there um, and let me see if I can find that level there we go so in this case the market uh, 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 moves down from a high of 141 to a low of 138 and then starts a corrective move moves above the 100 bar moving average but notice in this case what happens on this move to the downside and this corrective move the if you put a Fibonacci level in here uh, and after the market started its corrective move to the upside and, may, and perhaps went above the 100 bar moving average, you could start targeting 
levels where you might think the trend might stop. Uh, one is a 38.2% retrace and the market comes at 382 comes back to the 100, holds the 100, and then it breaks through the 38.2. The next level is the 50% retracement of this last move to the downside. And in this case, the 50% comes up and look, look where it ends up. It, 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 it comes, the 50% retracement is exactly at the same level as the 200 uh, hour moving average on this uh, chart. And so if you have not only a 50% retracement, but also a 200 hour moving average um, uh, line there, uh, which is one of our other uh, tools that we use at the same level, doesn't that give you more confidence that this is a key borderline level? This is a key level that if you were to sell at this level and put your stop oh, 15, 20 pips above it, that would be a key, uh, a, a, a level that you could, a low risk level that you could uh, uh, execute a trade in the hopes that perhaps the market moves down below the 100 and then continues to trend to the downside. So in this case, with two reasons to sell at the 50% and the, the 200 hour moving average, your confidence in the trend uh, reasserting itself to the downside increases, you anticipate that perhaps the trend will increase. And when the market does what it should do and finds the sellers at this 200, at this 50% retracement level, moves below the 100, now you're back in a trend. Now you can anticipate that the trend is going to continue. What happens if the market goes to this 100 bar moving average and bounces back up? Well, you know, then, then you start thinking about, you know, perhaps getting out at, at this 38.2% retracement level, or you, you just keep your stop in at the 140.23 level. Uh, so, so you, 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 the point is, this is a key level, level, um, and it's, and, it, and it's off of it. <coughs> Sorry, hold on one second. It's off both the Fibonacci tool that we use, and a, and a moving average tool that we use, and it starts the trend to the downside, and you're able to catch that trend and hopefully stay on that trend. And if you got in the in the in the position right here, what is your risk during this period? The market simply goes all the way down in a trend type move to the downside. It isn't until the market starts to bottom at this this point right here, uh, where and starts its move uh, to the upside, and we you'd see that. A little bit in your uh, five-minute chart, probably, uh, uh, but you can see how the the uh, market, um, you know, showed a, a little bit more spunk uh, in the corrective move to the upside here, and and uh, even at this point right here, 38.2 percent retracement, and the 100 bar moving average when it breaks that level, you can you can uh, pro uh, take your profit in on this trade on this move to the downside. Uh, so uh, that's uh, an example. I'm going to move now uh, forward. Uh, it's the most recent move to the downside. Are there any questions in regards to that uh, last example, Sean, Sean? I'll give you the mic for a second, and maybe we can uh, answer a few questions here if we have some. Okay, thank you very much, Greg. Well, great presentation so far. This has been the best one yet. Uh, so there's a question from Fuji88. He's wondering, uh, the question, I'm going to try and read it out uh, from him, is if there is a horizontal trend line where key support and resistance fall, together, uh, do you take these as more important than whether it is one of the three specific Fibonacci levels, meaning which one's more important, the support and resistance line or where the Fibonacci falls? Hopefully that's what he's asking. Um, you could use, um, I, 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 I try to shy away from saying which is more important, uh, folks, and the, I don't want to necessarily rank things. What, what, um, in that last example, what I, what I, um, what I demonstrated, I guess, with the 50% retracement and the 200 bar moving average, that is, if you can pile on a couple of reasons why a level should be important, using a Fibonacci, using a moving average, move, using a trend line, using a remembered line, uh, then you have much more confidence in that trade as a borderline. If you just have one one thing there, it's okay to trade against uh, a moving average line at, at uh, you know by itself. I've seen it time and time again where a moving average line uh, holds 
holds a level. You know, it comes down here and it holds this level. Now, I don't know if this is a Fibonacci level, uh, but the market comes up there and holds a level. It comes up here, holds a 100 bar moving average. Uh, it comes down here, holds a 200. So, you know, you can do these things. What I'm trying to teach you is to trade near these borderline levels as best as you can. And if you want to be more conservative, you want to, you want to be more patient in your trading, Look for those borderline levels where you have a couple of reasons to trade. If you have a reason to trade, you also have a reason to get out of a trade. And that, um, uh, that is, that help, that, in other words, you define your risk. And, um, if you define your risk and you're comfortable with that risk, um, and you have a couple reasons to do that trade, uh, then you're, you're gonna be more successful in, uh, in your trading. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be right all the time. In that situation, the price could have gone above the 200 bar moving average, could have gone above the 50% retracement. In which case, what would you do? You'd stop yourself out. How many times have you stopped yourself out in trading? That's part of trading, winning and losing. So I, I, I don't like to rank them, uh, but I do like to, you know, perhaps the best way to answer that, Sean, um, is to, uh, and Harley, is to just uh, look for the most obvious uh, one. The ones that you think the market is really is probably uh, focused on. I do like to focus mo mainly first on the moving averages, uh, but the Fibonacci's also really come into play, and so to remember mine. So uh, that's why I love the tools that I use. I think they, they work uh, very well, and all of them work very well. All right, so um, um, are there any more questions, Sean? I'll turn the mic off. Or turn okay, if I can do a review of the British pound versus the U.S. dollar um, right now. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, all right. Uh, well, let's do a, a review of the um, of, of the, the uh, pound versus the U.S. dollar here, and um, I'll do this in, in, in relation to the uh, Fibonacci uh, retracement level. But here's an hourly ch chart uh, on that uh, currency pair, and um, what uh, what what uh, you see here um, in, in you know continuing our lesson is when the market moved above the 100 bar moving average at this point right here. It gives a bullish bias uh, in that uh, currency pair. Uh, it then moves above the 200, and we move to a level here uh, that uh, you know perhaps corresponds with these lows uh, right here. The market is trying to form a bottom uh, here in the pound versus uh, US, uh, US dollar. So you, you, know, you, you tend to get a corrective type move, and in this case, what we saw here was the market um, if you put a Fibonacci at this point right here where the market uh, ran into some resistance here at, the level, at this level right here and started to come back down uh, and even move below the 200 bar moving average. And if you put a Fibonacci retracement level on it, the 38.2% came at the 145.09. And lo and behold, the market did find support at that 145.09 level. What is also significant here uh, is the uh, is the 38.2 is a 140. Uh, 4509. Where's the 100 hour moving average? The 100 hour moving average is 144.97. So although it's not as clean, you know, let's say as that other example where we had the 50% uh, percent retracement and the uh, 200 bar moving average, in this case, uh, they're within about a, a 10 pips of, of each other, 10 to 12 pips of each other. And the fact that it held this 38.2% retracement, it held the 100 bar moving average and then moved back above the 200 bar moving average at this point with this move to the upside suggested that, oh, this is a trading opportunity to the upside. Why? What is your risk if you were bought the, uh, if you bought the euro here? What is your risk? Your risk is it goes below the 200 bar moving average. It's at 38.2% retracement. Your risk is if it goes below 144.96. So that's one trade opportunity. What is your risk if the, if the market moved above the 200 bar moving average and came in this area right here? Your risk is if the market goes back below the 200 or perhaps even down to the uh, 145.09 level. Uh, this this level right here uh, uh, comes in around, oh, I don't know, it comes in around, I don't know, 60 level or something, 65 level. Uh, th this uh, 100, 200 bar moving average is at 46. So you'd be risking about 20 pips on this trade right here just below the 200 uh, but uh, a lot of traders will risk that amount uh, on any given trade during the day uh, this is still close to the uh, close to um, the market and a low risk trading opportunity especially given the move that we saw to the upside so uh, looking at the sterling versus USR and continuing on to the top here we do reach a, another high here at 
57. And in this case, the market starts a more pronounced move to the downside here. It's pretty um, steep to the uh, downside. Uh, we left a, a tail. Uh, we we went up and tested this high right here. Couldn't get above that high. Uh, good reasons to sell the market here, no doubt, from a fundamental standpoint as well. Uh, and the market trended hard to the downside here. But note, even uh, in this hard move to the downside, which took the price from 147.57 to 145.06. I mean, that's a pretty good move. 250 pips to the downside from the high to the low in a matter of about eight or so hours. Um, the market still came in here and it, and it broke below the 100 and the 200, given a bearish bias. The market still had this last level of support here at the 61.8% retracement that found support. If you didn't buy here, that's okay. If you bought when the market moved back above the 100 and moved above the 200 at here, that's, that's a good trade. Why? Because it, the 61.8% held. We got back above the 100. We got back above the 200. We tested the 200. Our two moving averages are moving closer. This is the trade you want to look for. What is your risk on this trade? Very little here. This is the difference between uh, 145.72 and 145.48. Again, about 20 or so pips uh, of risk. Um, and you may, you may even use the risk to be the 50% retracement at 54 right here. 73 to 54, most people are willing to accept that type of risk in a trade. If you're lucky, if you took the trade, if you took this trade, um, you would you would have a nice gain to the upside. So uh, th this is you know the power of Fibonacci's uh, is is they tend to um, uh, 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 find uh, support and uh, re resist uh, support levels on corrective type moves. Uh, let's let's continue this trend uh, to the upside here. And what we see is the pound sterling goes up to a new high at 148.54. And in this case, we break the 100. The next target is what? 38.2% retracement. And in this case, the market moves just below. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. <coughs> the market uh, moves just below the 38.2% uh, the retracement. In which case, what is the target level on this move to the downside? It would be this 200 bar moving average would be the next target level on the bearish highway on this corrective highway. We broke the hunt, the moving average. We start at uh, 38.2. We should see the market move lower. It goes to 45, and what does it do? It reverses, and it closes back above the 38.2% retracer level and starts this move again to the upside. This inability to, to, to move to the next target reversed the car on the highway. It said, mm, something's going on. This area right here is, a, is an opportunity to buy the market. This area is an opportunity to buy the market, uh, breaking above the 100. Why? Because we held that level. We're back above the 100. And then the market moves, uh, continues its move to the upside. So this is the progression that you see uh, using the Fibonacci. This is the progression that you see you see in trades as you, as you use uh, the uh, tools that we use. Um, and uh, if, if the market uh, fails on a break of a Fibonacci, it doesn't get to a new level, uh, then look for the reversals, look for the moves to the back to the upside, uh, and uh, uh, that's um, that's how I uh, look to trade the trade the market, trade the Fibonacci retracement levels. Currently, at the at the moment, uh, with the, uh, with the market price up here, uh, I do have this uh, trend line coming in. I'm going to move my Fibonacci all the way up to the top here. Um, I have I have the uh, uh, Fibonacci moved up to a new high of 150.10. Uh, that was a high here for the day. Uh, currently trading. At 95, uh, we have this trend line that I connect these highs here. Um, although the market moved above that trend line right here, um, I continue the integrity of that trend line. Why? Because it failed on this and it started its corrective move to the downside. Uh, we got above. We did a similar type move here uh, in the pound sterling where the market broke above. But notice that we held this this line here. This is a high right here. We, uh, we use that level as resistance here. Uh, and we used it level as support last night here. And so the bias still remains a little bit to the upside here. I'm a little bit worried that we're below or, or well, we're right at the trend line. Where is my target to the upside for the sterling? Um, my, my key target uh, for this currency pair, I'm going to have to go to the daily chart, uh, is the 100-day moving average. That comes in at 150.49. Uh, and uh, that would be the first time 
if the market moves above that 100-day moving average, it would be the first time it moves above that 100 moving average until uh, going back to this time in January. Uh, so this um, this uh, level is my key resistance level. I would think that the market would find some pause uh, at the 150.49 level or as the market approaches that level. As long as the price can remain and stay above this trend line and continue its move to the upside. You can talk, Sean. Any more questions? Come on. And I can tell from all the comments in the chat window. Uh, here's a question. A fellow was asking if you could do a quick analysis of the uh, gold chart. All right. Uh, all right. Um, so um, taking a look um, at the uh, euro dollar, uh, if I uh, um, if you uh, were to look at the uh, euro dollar currently at the moment, I'll do a little bit of Fibonacci analysis in regard to this. Uh, the one thing that I do want to point out here is that these Fibonacci's work in in the um, uh, in all time frames. I like to look at the five minute. I like to look at the hourly. I like to look at the daily. Uh, and this is an example of uh, uh, of uh, it working here again today, or or it giving you again another clue as far as uh, 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 support levels uh, go. Uh, when the five minute, uh, if you take the low from yesterday to the high here from today, uh, the market obviously uh, started to correct and move to the downside. Where did we initially stall? We stalled at the 61.8% uh, retracement, uh, move back up to test. Um, you know, uh, the the um, uh, moving averages perhaps you know come up to uh, old old uh, uh, support level uh, seen from uh, earlier in the day, and the market moved back back again down to that 122.62 uh, level. Uh, started to move to the upside and move. Uh, to the upside. So these can be used intraday as well. Uh, this is another borderline situation uh, where, the, where you have an opportunity uh, to buy at a uh, at a level uh, against the Fibonacci level with the stop uh, below it. Um, taking a look at the uh, euro dollar uh, just quickly on the, on its last move to the downside, uh, I'm going to go uh, back in time. <clears throat> and we know that the, this market trended to the downside here over the last uh, uh, well, month, month and a half or so, um, and all this uh, started started at this uh, top right here uh, at this uh, level uh, at around this uh, up here at around the 136 uh, type level. Uh, and initially, when the market first started its move to the downside, move below the 200 bar moving average, uh, that was a clue that the, the market was starting to trend, uh, possibly trend, move below the 200 bar moving average or 200 hour moving average, came down to a support level. And the corrected first move came up to the 38.2% retracement level. What is the significance of this as well? Right at the 200 bar moving average, 200 hour moving average. And from that point, the market started its uh, continuation. Uh, trends to the downside, uh, worked along the Fibonacci's, worked along the 100 bar, uh, the 100 bar moving average, uh, and kept its move to the downside here. Uh, and, uh, each of the time, uh, you, you can continue the move to the downside here, come up to a 38.2% retracement. Uh, even though the price moved above the 200, uh, it held that level and started to move to the downside. These are the clues that you want to look into the market. These are the clues that allow you to stay on these trends, that allow you to anticipate a trend and and uh, and uh, uh, gain uh, the uh, benefit of stay, staying on the trend. So um, I'm going to take a look. At some of these other uh, questions here, um, show W pattern neckline uh, uh, in a sideways market. Can you use previous Fibonacci levels uh, for support uh, and resistance? Uh, Rudolph, no, I, I tend to um, take them off uh, at, after they've um, exhausted themselves. Uh, Fibonacci's are used for um, uh, uh, on, on corrective type moves. Uh, and uh, to target them. Uh, so if, uh, if they're, if they've run their course, um, I like to uh, take them off and to, um, uh, uh, move them off to the side. Um, Harley says, I prefer to use bowlers or bands in sideways markets. Um, uh, I, I, uh, in sideways markets, I like to use, uh, trend lines and our moving average lines, uh, as a, um, uh, a levels of support. And resistance, and what I mean by uh, it's not necessarily uh, trend lines. What I like to use is, is horizontal trend lines. So, for instance, if the market is moving sideways in this uh, period right here, um, I'll look for uh, key levels uh, that have uh, um, that become important levels on a number of different bars. For instance, in this case, 
um, I can go back in time and I can see, well, we had a high here. Uh, we had a high here. Uh, we, we stalled here. We had highs here. These are all on hourly bars, lows here. And, and you start to develop, uh, the, these, um, <coughs> the, <coughs> these price levels that become either points of, uh, support, uh, or, uh, points of, uh, resistance. Um, or they can become points where the market squeezes to the upside. So in this case, the market moves above the 100 bar moving average, moves above this level, moves up to the 200, and then comes back down below that level, and then it becomes a level of resistance. So that's what I, I try to use. I try to um, keep things as, as simple as possible. Uh, how about, uh, let me see here. Uh, Spartan low is down. Looks like you move the Fibonacci high low with the new high and low to use a Fibonacci expansion. Um, no, I, I, again, I, tr I just try to keep, um, uh, I, I, I just, uh, like to use the regular old, um, uh, Fib Fibonacci levels, uh, in my analysis. I just, uh, I, I just think that the market is, um, uh, most of the market players, uh, will pref find it easier to just, uh, you know, see this and, and, and move their Fibonacci's in from the high to the low, low. Uh, and uh, and find those uh, key levels along along the path. Um, I, I use the Fibonacci's in conjunction with things like our moving averages, things like the remembered lines or trend lines as well. And those three tools are just good enough for me. Um, and, and they find you know the key levels where the market uh, either stalls or gives you a clue. So you know, for instance, in this example, when the market's moving down, it starts to move back up to the upside. We move up to the up to the the 200, move up uh, to the uh, uh, 100 bar moving average. We get above that level, which is also a key level at the 50. But this failure right here, um, you may be buying it here in this area. When it doesn't go any further than that, it starts coming back down. Get out because it didn't do what it should do. The market starts to move to the downside. Same goes true here. You're looking for the move to move up to the next target level here at 61.8. But when it doesn't get to that level. Uh, it's like turning that car around on the highway. It's like going the other way. And, uh, so here we're on the bullish highway here. We break above the 200, break back above the 100 hour. 100, we should go up to the 200. When it doesn't do that and starts to move down, you start to question that move to the upside. Um, and, uh, uh, but, uh, this is, you know, this is, this is thing going a non-trending type market. Um, do I hold them overnight? You know, uh, you know, I can't tell you to hold things overnight or uh, or uh, not um, as a, uh, a a trader. Um, if you have, uh, and I certainly, if if you're going to go to bed or move away, you know, or, or, uh, uh, what I what I would and, uh, and what I would suggest you do uh, if you feel confident in the move is to find a good level uh, that's going to give you some room overnight. Now you're gonna you may you may not do it uh, use the same level. That you would if you were following the market. Um, uh, but if you, like for instance, if the market is, if, if you somehow sold this double top up here, um, at 124.67, um, and there are probably reasons why, uh, that level was, was important, um, in addition, well, the fact that we had a double top here. But if you were, you were in a position, let's say at this point right here, um, and you probably go to find, uh, this right here, and the market's going down, uh, and it breaks through the 100 bar moving average, and you're, you're feeling like there's a, there's a move to the uh, downside, uh, still to come here, um, in, in the euro. Put a, uh, put a Fibonacci from the high to the low level. You know your 100 bar moving average is here. You know your 38.2% retracement level is here. And put your stop, you know, either here or here. This would be an un unfortunate situation, um, where the market just went above the 100 bar moving average and stopped you out. But that's, you know, that's the game that we play. Um, if you want to be more conservative, you know, take the second level, take the 38.2% retracement level and go to bed and be comfortable with it. this. I don't necessarily suggest that you go to bed with a 10 pip gain in your, in your account. Uh, but I would, would, um, uh, I wouldn't be opposed, uh, to if you have a good gain in a, in a trade, uh, to find a, um, a conservative stop or a stop of reason to get out. Um, that uh, is at a key level, like a Fibonacci level or a moving average level. If you do that, then um, uh, you're going to be um, you're, you're going to have that possibility of staying on the trend, being able to see it go to the 200 bar moving average here, um, and getting out with a, a much more uh, a, a bigger profit. 
Uh, so I think I'm running out of time here. Uh, I appreciate everyone coming in. If you have questions that I didn't get to, uh, please uh, email them to me at greg at fxdd.com. That's G-R-E-G at fxdd.com. Um, and I'll be happy to uh, answer them. Um, and There it is right up there. Um, and also, um, if you have interest in uh, perhaps opening an account, if you like what I have to say, I also do uh, 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 maintain a blog, uh, not only on FX Street, but our own, own site at fxdd.com. And um, you can send me an email, and I'll be happy to uh, direct you to that. Thank you very much, Vicky. Thank you, people at FX Street. Thank you, all the people who came in here today. Have a great day.